Welcome to Your Next Level Now with your host, Bob Donnell. As a human behaviorist, Bob has helped people from every walk of life reach their next level both personally and professionally. Whether a celebrity, professional athlete, or entrepreneur, Bob has helped them align their behavior with their desired result in their life and career. This is Your Next Level Now with Bob Donnell. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> Welcome to Your Next Level Now. Starting in two seconds. All right, guys, welcome to next, your next level now. Um, every Monday morning at 10 o'clock. We've been doing this for many, many years. And um, it's always my privilege to bring people together. And uh, it's more important to bring the right people together. I mean, there's a lot of people that you can go sit in a room with thousands and thousands and thousands of people, but a lot of times it's not the right people. It's not the, the right group. And sometimes you're listening to people that you go, I have nothing in common with them. I have nothing that I can learn from them. I have, uh, I, I don't identify with that person. I don't, well, here's, here's my challenge to you. Um, probably the challenge is you, <laughs> because I believe that I can learn something from anyone. And I know that most of my guests do as well. We can learn what to do or what not to do in a lot of different ways. So as I, as we embark on this journey today, I really want to, um, introduce you to a friend of mine that we've been friends for many years. We were just trying to calculate the dates, but I, we both remember the event that we met at. It was her event. We both met at the event at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Um, I can tell you several people that were in the room. Saida Garrett, who wrote uh, Man in the Mirror for Michael Jackson. Um, we had uh, Rolanda Watts, who I'm still in touch with today. Um, Sandy, uh, Sandra D. Robinson was there. That's where I met her. Um, so, I mean, we have some, some people that we've associated with over the years. But, you know, the most, most important thing that I really want to draw attention to is this woman, Marsha Engel, has, has done so much to empower win, women and empower them in such a way that they get to be, I hate the word authentically because people overuse it, but authentically themselves because she has a, she has a real gift at looking in and saying, this is what I think your message really is. I know you're talking about this, I know that this is what you want to be your platform and your empowerment, but here's what I see. And uh, we talked about it a little bit offline that I go, man, that's such a gift to be able to help me, people identify. Marsha Engel is, um, is just uh, one of my favorite people. She's just an amazing woman. She's a gift to us all. I can truly say that. And uh, so without further ado, Marsh, welcome. Wow, Bob, thank you so much. You know, I found... I'm excited about being here and, and connecting with your community and connecting with you. You know, we see each other in social media, but how often do we really pause to talk? And I, I think it's fun. Um, yeah, we were just talking about, we don't remember where, when exactly we met. I'm certain we met before the event um, with the Amazing Woman's Day, Beverly Hills. Marianne mm -hmm. Williamson was there as well. Do you remember? Oh, that? that's right. Yeah, Marianne Williamson was there. My mentor, Dr. Sharon Stroud, who's no longer with us, she was there. Um, so many, uh, yeah. beautiful. That was actually one of the most meaningful gatherings. And for a lot of different reasons, I believe, and probably for a lot of different reasons for a lot of different people that were yeah. there. But we really connected that day. and uh, We yeah. really did. And we've had conversations, you know, in the middle of, you know, late night on, you know, on Facebook or whatever. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and I remember those. And um what stood out about to me that night, that day, and I don't know that you even saw this, but here's what I saw. You, you were, you had put the group together, you were front and center, and yet it didn't feel like you were front and center. Let me explain. You were running the show, obviously, but I don't think anybody would have really known other than that you were really directing people's attention to the other women in the room. 
that is a gift. That is something that I, um, I remember that day di distinctly that I felt like you were there to showcase others, even though it was your event. And I, I really appreciate oh, thank that. You. About you. Thank you. Yeah. You know, when I, when I received my calling, when I got the download of what I was here um, and still believe that I'm here to contribute, um, I heard create a day on which all women honor themselves. And create a day on which all women honor themselves, create a day on which all women mm. honor their lives, create a day on which all women honor their callings. And the only way that I knew, the way that I felt compelled to do this would be to bring women together, collaborate together, support one another, and shine light on each other. And so it wasn't about one person's event. It was about a room full of people who were creating an, an environment, an atmosphere for transformation. And that meant, you know, there were people on stage, there were people in the audience that did lots of sharing. I don't know if you remember that or not, mm -hmm. but lots of sharing, you know, we really engaged the audience. So yeah. from the very beginning, create a day on which all women honor themselves. I would say all, all people honor themselves. Now today I would. Um, that, you know, that was a lot of years ago. That was in 2001, I believe, wow. that, um, okay. I, that uh, the gift of that, uh, that download. I was in Teotihuacan, Mexico, studying with Don Miguel Ruiz, and we had just yeah. come off the Pyramid of the Sun, and I was blank. I had nothing. I was looking for a calling. I was looking for a message. I was looking for, you know, send it with, you know, over with a you know a hot air balloon the message or some, something I needed a message and nothing was there man when I got down to the bottom and my feet hit the ground create a day on which all women honor themselves and I mm. said how in the world would I do that and yeah. spirit said you've been prepared your entire life to do exactly that mm. so imagine mm. that we could all say that to ourselves Wouldn't that, yeah w won't that also, be amazing we when could all say that right mm -hmm. um you know, I, I, somebody told me one day because of all my past experiences, um, I always call it, that's the price I've paid to be who I am today. And that's the price you've paid and you know, all that. Somebody said to me, Bob, you are uniquely qualified to talk on this subject or to share about this subject or to speak to these people. And it was because I was going to an event that was a crisis filled event. And, and, um, it was, it was, you know, it was bad stuff going on. It was in Uvalde, Texas. And uh, we know about the school shooting there. And I shouldn't even said that. But um, when that happened, um, I was going and somebody said, do you realize that you are uniquely qualified? And I went, wow, I love that term, uniquely qualified. When you, when, if somebody were to say to you, you are uniquely qualified, Marsh, to speak on the subjects and to empower women in the way that you do, what would that mean to you? And how would, how would you take that in and translate that? Do you know, I feel as though when I realized that I too, I, I, I say it a little differently. I say, you're, you're fully equipped. You're fully equipped. The question is, how are you equipped? But when I got that question and I started exploring myself, I realized that so much of my life experience are the challenges that women experience. And my own depth of willingness to look at that shadow, to look at the depth of that um, disconnect, uh, at times that became a deeper connection. And I began to value those experiences. I mean, you know, just big experiences, life, life altering experiences that then gave me the capacity within me to heal it. And then when I could heal it, I could see the healing that was possible in others. Mm -hmm. And I, I hope I'm making sense here. It's that when I when I saw it within myself and I could find deep compassion for those experiences, how I'd been equipped, mm -hmm. how I'd been prepared, how I had, uh, my life had given me the tools, but those tools could not be used until I could access them myself. And the only way I could access them would be through my own depth of compassion for my own experiences. And when I could do that, I found love and then I could see it in others. I could see their potential. I could see their possibilities. I could see the value and how they've been equipped uniquely individually, how they could be, they were equipped. Uh, I, I, man, I, I received that. I appreciate that. That's a, again, that's a gift though. That's something that, you know, how many people have been shown that, told that, 
um, shared with that, but they've never done anything with it. I want to applaud you for for picking up that message um, once it was laid down, picking Thank it up you. and running with it and doing something with it. You know, people used to say, Bob, uh, and they still do, you know, you're so wildly intuitive. You're so wildly mm. gifted in your intuition. And I, I always, you know, I always felt like I'm not sure it's intuition. I think it's a depth of compassion and love. I think it's an ability to care so deeply for my own experiences that it opened up a flow of being able to recognize those possibilities in others. And so intuitive, yes, but more of a, uh, you know, um, an energy intuitive perhaps, or, a, um, you know, a soul intuitive. I'm yeah, sure. I like the word you used where you were talking about being empathetic. Yes. Yeah, that empathy. I'm, I'm with you. I, I'm, um, I'm not a big word. I'm not a big um, embarker on the word intuitive. Mm -hmm. I think we're all intuitive to some degree. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, those that have empathy, those that really can be empathetic and understand what somebody's going through, um, I think that makes you even more intuitive. <laughs> if you know, in that yeah, in that sense, I agree. And that was a journey. You know, the journey of empathy is one that really starts with um, self love, and we have to go there first. And then the more we go to, into self love, I, I feel I see that the more empathy is possible. Mm. So now it's like wow I can only imagine what that must be for that person yeah. even with when somebody's angry with me or when somebody's mm. you know um there's a big pushback on something or you know sure. I, I'm usually able to stay present and say I I got I got where that's coming from mm. I get that's that's pain speaking to me mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. it's pain speaking to me yeah that's um well that's a tough one <laughs> It is. It is. It is. Tough. I'm not great tough. at that. I'm not. I, I'm definitely not saying that's an easy one. I'm not great at that. <laughs> yes. say, Look, I'm better. So I'm better, but I'm not great at it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I'm that. not there either, Bob. But I can tell you that by speaking it, I, I I pray that I'm igniting a deeper level of it within me. You know, it's. A, I think it's an ongoing journey. You know, nobody. Are we ever there? Really? You know, are right. we ever there? We're always learning. Right. Yeah, one of my next level pillars is every next level demands a different you. So I love that. Everything that we are, if, to I get to anywhere else, we're going to have to become something different. Yes. Be somebody different. What, um, you know, I remember back, um, this was several years ago, but you lost both of your parents in like an 18 month gap, right? Mm -hmm. 18 month period. Mm -hmm. How did that translate into your life? today yeah. because you've written I mean the last I counted it was like seven or eight books and you've already mm -hmm. you've got another one that you just started writing yes the ninth one's coming out in next year, I, next holy year. Gosh, the I ninth just... one. yeah super excited yeah very excited about this one I always you know every book is the same experience for me I always say oh my gosh this is my my favorite book I'm so excited about this one but this one truly feels as though it's our 25th anniversary of the amazing woman movement 25th anniversary so, that pardon me well, 25th anniversary 25th anniversary of the amazing woman movement but to get back to your question uh you know i was um it was a life changing experience when my mom passed and i say that um everyone that loses a parent it's it's life changing in in some way uh my mom came to me and my grandmother came to me as uh, as my mom was passed had passed and from the other side and spoke to me and said um you know marsh it's your time it's your time it's a search for the amazing woman mm. and i was like i don't know what would that be what would a search for the amazing woman be and the only way i knew to do it bob was to look outside of myself to find the reflection of myself within others and i started interviewing women everywhere I went this is how the book series started I literally my mom's message to me it's a search for the amazing woman it's your time mm. it, that could be translated many ways any woman listening right now could say that to herself it's my time it's a search for the amazing woman within me mm. uh, so I went out I started interviewing women and I interviewed women from every walk of life everywhere I went if you were in an elevator 
with me if you were <laughs> next to me on an airplane. If you were at the grocery store line and it was long, I was going to be interviewing you. I was going to be learning about you. And I realized now I was honing the skills to be able to listen deeply, really deeply, not only deeply to their answers, but deeply to the quality of the question that I was asking, because mm -hmm. that question was the same question that I was seeking within myself. So when I would speak Say to that someone, again, Say yeah. that again. So the question that I was asking was actually the question that I was seeking within myself, the answer that I was seeking within myself. And I was doing it by way of having conversation or what appeared to be conversation. Mm -hmm. And I called it transformational interviewing at some point because what happened, Bob, was that not only did the person I was interviewing or speaking to have a transformational experience, I had a transformational experience. So the exchange that we had was one of a reflection of new potentials within us that were longing to be expressed. And by having that conversation, we both walked away changed. We both walked away transformed. And I started collecting these stories that I had written. I, by the way, I was not a writer, not an author, not a speaker, not a coach, not any of the things that um, I might be known for today. Mm. I was a woman that longed to discover uh, her own path, her own calling. And that was the commitment. And my mom, that was the gift my mom gave to me through mm. her passing. And my grandmother too, I would say, they were both there. And they both said to me, let's do this. Let's go for this. Let you let's discover who you really are and you're going to do it by way of helping others discover who they are mm. i can go so many different ways with it's this moving i know it's moving it's it, you know it when really i tell the story moving. and i've told it for 25 years i've told the story every time i get a little bit choked up you know about it because it's a, such a deep emotional experience you know to lose to lose a parent is uh, very very challenging and um, I was in deep grieving uh, mm. about that. But I, you know what I did is I, when my mom passed and I got that message, I initially went Northern California and I started writing there, just writing. I wasn't, a, you know, I just find some words to put on paper and then start interviewing people and then find words to describe what your experience was with that person. What were you discovering and what were they discovering and how could we translate that into a story mm -hmm. that then, you know, became a multiple book series that I got a publishing deal for. I went to New York. I don't know if you know, I went to New York to the firehouses of New York City right after 9-11 and wrote the book on the female firefighters of FDNY. What? And wrote their how come I don't know that? Yeah. yeah. I wrote their stories. That was an experience to go. Yeah to New York and, and work with, there was only 24 female firefighters out of 14,000 men uh, that served for FDNY. And I interviewed all of them. They're truly trailblazers. Wow. 114 year history before women were firefighters in New York City. So it was pretty, that was a big story and it was a big transformational experience and a deep, deep, deep healing experience for the women of uh, FDNY. They had a lot to say. They had a lot to share. A lot to share. You know, Marsh, um, <clears throat> when, you, when you look back at your life's work up to this point, what's, the, what's something, what's one of those moments that really stands out to you? Uh, you know, I truly believe, Bob, that it's every single day. I could say that today was a moment that stood out because mm -hmm. I was willing to say yes to something. I was willing to say yes to writing the next book. I was willing to say yes to doing the interview and spending time with you, which I'm, which is precious to me. I was, a, you know, I'm able to say, you know what, you, I had a, a couple of sessions that canceled rather than reacting to that. I, I'm grateful that I had the opportunity to say to myself, that means you're going to go to the stupa, which is here in Sedona. It's a beautiful 
beautiful place of prayer. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I think that the gratitude of the moment that stands out most for me is that I don't give up. You know, I don't give up. It's not a seeking anymore. It's more of an, what would it be? A, um, a filling up. And then how can I use that filling up to serve others? How can I, you know, nourish my own spiritual awakenings so that they become, I become more present for you. I become more present for the work I'm called to do. And I think if we could all get, maybe if we all get, I think we went back to that very first, when I got the download of my call and create a day on which all women honor themselves, if we got that the woman that we're honoring or the person we're honoring is ourself, mm. how can I best honor my own creative capacities? How can I best honor the calling that's been given to me? How can I best honor my own, you know, the nurturing of my own wellness, creative wellness? Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think that's the, that's a pivotal moment for me just to realize that and speak that to you. That's a pivotal moment for me is to know that I'm okay saying that out loud and I'm okay doing my best to live that. Now, I don't know, as you know, I'm get, I overwork, I struck, you know, I, I, I definitely am not there a hundred percent of the time, but I tell you that I'm, my commitment is to do my best is to do my best there. And here's what I love about it though, is even when you, when you know that you're not ready, you do it anyways. Yeah. Even when you know that, okay, I'm not perfect and I'm going to put myself out there and people are going to think that I'm perfect because I'm talking about this, but I'm not. No, it, no it's anyway. the opposite. It's like, I'm taught, remember when I said that what I'm asking questions about was something I seek within myself, the talking is about the seeking within myself. When we speak it out, you know, we can then identify the call and we can identify and definitely not there yet, but definitely committed to do my best. Yeah. And, and, and the it. part I appreciate about that is that kind of eradicates the excuse of imposter syndrome, yeah. right? It, you can feel like you're not and still do it. Yes. Um, and and I, I just I don't... can remember, I'm telling you that I... To, to get me on stage speaking, to get me in interviews, to, I did not even want to call myself a published author. When I got my book, my first book came to me and I had an agent at the time and I got it in the mail and I called her and I said, oh my gosh, I just got the book in the mail. And guess what? It has my name on the front of it. This is the most embarrassing story to tell, but it, it, it's, you know, it, 1999, 2001 is when my first book came out. I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm an author. But I did not feel like an author. I felt like a, I was willing to call myself a storyteller. I was willing to call myself an interviewer. I don't even know if I was willing to say writer yet. Um, definitely not author. Not author. It felt like big, heavy responsibilities to me. Mm. And interviewing felt like something that I, you know, I have a passion for learning about you. I have a learn, you know, passion about learning about the person I'm speaking with. Yeah. Um, but most definitely, uh, I, there was a big learning curve, huge learning curve for me, which actually led me to do the work that I first started doing was that I realized I wasn't prepared to be an author. So I'm going to help women mm. become prepared to be authors because yeah. there is a difference when you become an author, the world does stand up and take notice of what you have to say in a different way. And you have to be ready for that. I wasn't ready for it, Bob. <laughs> I wasn't ready. <laughs> But you did it anyways. I was, I was like, I was like, yeah, this is too much. Yeah. But over yes, time, absolutely. I got better at it. And today yeah. I truly still want to get better at it. It was I, building know. that muscle, right? And you just yes, keep building always. the muscle. Always, always. What do you think right now in this, in this point in what's going on in the world? We don't have to get into what was in the past, the last four years, what's right now. Here's the question I have for you is, what do you think it is that women globally are needing more than ever to recognize their oh what are they needing yeah what, what, are, what, are, what are they lacking or what are they i don't they think wanting? i don't think you know what i'm 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 like not a believer of that they're lacking anything and i know that okay. might give somebody pause to think thank you thank you for catching that 
I but I just don't believe we're lacking anything. I believe if we're lacking, if there is something we're lacking, it's that we've forgotten to remember that we're not lacking. <laughs> so if there's anything we're lacking, it's it would be to recognize how amazing, you know, the next book is called Igniting the Soul of the Iconic Amazing Woman. Wait, say that again? Yes, it's so good. It's so good. Igniting the Soul of the Iconic Amazing Woman. Oh. And, you know, like sit with that word I for a second. And when I first got the word iconic downloaded, you know, it was like, write a book about iconic, amazing woman. I thought, oh my gosh, what, what, like, that's just a big word. That's like too much of a word. And it's, there's going to be too much of a pushback on that. Nobody wants to be iconic, but here's what I got through that. This has been a year and a half now sitting with the word iconic. Mm -hmm. We're all iconic within us is an iconic capacity to serve within us is, a, we talked earlier, an iconic capacity of how we've been equipped, how our life has prepared us, how genius we truly are that we've forgotten perhaps because we've forgotten how we've been equipped. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything that we might be lacking or need, it would be to recognize that there's an iconic capacity within us that has yet to be acknowledged. You know, writing about it, writing about it, when I first, you know, I bring women together to write the book. And when we first started talking about iconic, amazing woman, I could tell there was a pause within everyone. There was a pause. And I said, I think it's the title of the book. I think we're taking responsibility for becoming iconic. And that's not what that word means. Hmm. To me, we're taking responsibility for recognizing our own iconic capacities. And by knowing that, then we start to have a, an elevated image of ourselves and an, an elevated way that we can serve in the world. And I'm not saying that that's going to be easy necessarily, but I'm, I think that's where we are today is to truly recognize that we are equipped and empowered in ways that we've not yet realized. So I say that about women, but I also say that about our feminine nature. So that would mean anyone who who feels as though they can tune into their feminine nature and elevate through the expression of that power. Mm. Thank you for saying that. Being, you know, being raised by a single mom until I was 17 when she died, um, I was I was very in touch with feminine because my older brothers were 10 and nine years older than me. So by the time I was seven, they were out of the house. Um, but the but my mom had such um, such an amazing gift and empathy and just love for people. Um, I did a broadcast on her a couple of weeks ago where I just said, I don't know anyone that didn't like her. I mean, they all loved her. Even when they were, she was kicking them out of their apartments and being evicted, they would stand out in the parking lot and cry. I mean, they loved each, you know, they loved each other. Um, and I always, I always looked at that as like, yeah, why do I feel so, ugh? because I feel like I'm like my mom. And then at the same time, I went, wow, that's one of my gifts. One of my strengths is to recognize, think about the movie Mel Gibson was in, What Women Want, right? What do women want? Maybe they're not lacking, but what are they wanting right now that maybe they don't even know that they want? And that's where having you in their life mm. helps them identify what it is that they are wanting that they're not achieving. Yeah. You're asking me that question, what I believe women are wanting. Yeah. Men, listen in, lean in. I don't know that it has anything to do with um, the men's perception of them. I believe it has everything to do. I'm going to speak for myself. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to speak for myself and for my community of clients that I coach. I believe we are awakening new capacities within ourselves. And to value those and hold those in high worth can be challenging because we've been so over identified in a way that does not include that capacity to serve or that capacity, that worth within us. For me, my journey has been one of, of discovering that worth, constantly discovering that worth, up-leveling that worth. 
-hmm. And when I'm able to do that, Bob, I'm able to serve in a bigger way because now I'm showing up more fully expressed in myself. So what do women long for? Yeah. What do they want? I think that we project outwardly that we want the world to respect us, but I think what we're really looking for, and please forgive me for this, but I think what we're really looking for is that deepening high level of self-respect. And that begins with honoring and valuing our own worth. And that's a, that's a, that's a job. So what they think or what they're saying they want is real respect, deep respect, but that comes from respecting themselves first. Isn't that, isn't that true for mankind and for everyone? It's for everyone. It's, it's everyone. True. I mean, it's, that's, a, you know, it's a big, it's a big thing to think about because we can certainly have all kinds of proof of how we're not respected. You know, we can, no shortage of us going out in the world and saying, you know, we're not respected in this way and we're that way and that way. I've always felt, Bob, from the very beginning that the very beginning of my work with women, that is if we could master the power that is within us in such a way that we hold it in such high respect and regard, and we see that worth and we walk that worth into the room and we, you know, we just carry that through our voice. We carry that through. I think that's, that's what I see for us. That's what I hold for us. And that's the work that I do is to help us see and it's the work I do with myself every day, you know, wake up, like, what can I see within myself that I've overlooked, denied, diminished? And believe me, there's no shortage of that within me. I find something new every day. <laughs> it's like, oh my gosh, listen to the way I'm talking about this or listen to the way I'm allowing myself to vision possibilities or, you know, look at that. I, I truly believe that um, it's not fighting the outward. Mm. It's embracing the inward. Amen. I, I, I appreciate and agree with that. So tell us, give us a couple of clues on how, or a couple of ideas on how we, as men or women, how we can do exactly that, how we can step into that. You know, there's a longing that's within us all the time that's speaking. And when that longing speaks, it's not speaking by accident. It's not speaking because it's not possible. It's not speaking because there's no potential there. It's not speaking because we're not already equipped. So when that longing speaks to us, our job is to recognize, how have I been equipped for this? If I were to say something that I've yet to communicate, what would it be that I would say? If there were some way that I could serve or look at a situation with new eyes, what would that be? How could I reimagine that in a new way mm -hmm. and begin to see that we're capable of that? I believe that when the calling comes to us, remembering back when spirit dropped in, you know, create a day on which all women honor themselves. And my very first question back to spirit was how in the world, how in the world would I ever do that? And spirit said loud and clear, you've been preparing for this your entire life. So when the ideas come to us, you know, then my next question was, how was I preparing for my entire life? Like, what was that? And then I had to look at some really deep things, you know, how I'd been prepared and then find that level of compassion. So I believe that when we have a calling that lands in our heart or is revealed to us, the first question is not to deny it, or the first thing to do is not deny it. The first thing to do would be to start to investigate, whoa, I have an amazing calling that's just been given to me. That means I'm also equipped. And that is also, I'm surrounded with people that can, can support me. I may not see them. I may not be allowing them in. Let me see, how can I allow those people in? How can I allow myself to receive more? Mm. That's another one too. You know, Ooh. we get so structured in the way we think things should be that we block out the new opportunities and the new potentials that are coming to us so I believe it's to partner with that calling and not need to know it all you know like I said every day I when the iconic amazing woman the title of that dropped in on me I thought I have no idea how I'm going to manage this one because it feels like such a big word for us to own yeah but 
that was that was my call that was the calling can you see how that was like my job was to dig in and find my own iconic so that i could help others find theirs so i think that when our callings come to us it's really kind of a hint of where we're intended to go and how did you prepare yourself to receive the calling because i got a calling in july 19 1979 at age 15 so that was my calling i know what it is i can remember exactly everything clear as bell but as I've gone through my life and, and work with so many people, most people go, don't have that moment. They don't have clarity of that moment. They probably had it or will receive it soon, but they need to be aware of it. How do you, how did you prepare yourself to be able to receive it and take action? Mm -hmm. To realize that I had no idea what it was. <laughs> good, good point. Absolutely. That I had no idea. I had no idea. So I surrendered into the, uh, it's, Sadly, the word that wants to be said here is I surrendered into the ignorance. I surrendered into the <laughs> I surrendered into the I have no idea what to do with my life. I have no idea how I'm equipped to move into the next level of my expression. Um, I, I think that surrender, you know, is is sometimes misunderstood. For me, surrender was just simply say. I'm realizing that I don't know and I'm okay not knowing. And I, in the not knowing, I opened up the opportunity to know if yeah. that's making sense to us. It's that it's, I did not have to figure it out. I did not have to structure it. Um, I think it was in, uh, the, the calling has come to me multiple times. Um, one, a, a, I don't know if we have time or not, but I have another story that's really pretty. We'll keep this going as long as you're available. Yeah. yeah, with Wayne Dyer. You know, Wayne Dyer, I had been diagnosed with lymphoma, which was kind of a gnarly disease that wanted to take, people said it was going to take my life mm -hmm. and that, you know, it was going to leave me with some disabilities at the very least. And I decided that wasn't the truth. I just decided that wasn't what I was going to believe. So I started studying with um, Wayne Dyer and I did it by way of two things, spending time in nature, walking, walking, hiking, walking, keeping my body moving, keeping my energy moving. And the other is listening to Wayne Dyer on a cassette tape. You remember those old Walkmans, those little, yeah. those Walkmans yeah. a lot of years ago. So yeah. these old Walkmans, you know, you had it on your, your waist and I'd listen to him every single day. Wayne Dyer. What earbuds? They were airplanes. No, no, no I am like, yeah, no. It was like <laughs> I don't even know what. It, maybe it was. It, I'm not sure what. I think it was over the head, like you said. Right, like, right, over the head. And I was up on this. You know, I just keep keep my body moving because it kept my energy moving. It just yeah. kept me moving. So Wayne Dyer and I, Wayne Dyer on my cassette tape, and me by way of putting my feet on the ground started hiking every day i mean for hours every day up this big hill and up it was in uh, um calabasas in los angeles area and one day wayne dyer is talking about the willingness to die hmm. the willingness to die and it felt so big to me the willingness to die and he started talking about when we realize the richness of our life and we're willing, we have a willingness to let go, to die to the old way of being, to die to the old way of thinking, we, you know, definition of ourselves, to die to, so not in a sense of releasing life, perhaps, but releasing our identity in this life, release, releasing how we've identified ourselves. And that moment brought me to a big aha. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to let go of ways that I've defined myself that might be hanging on to a need for this disease that's hit my body. And I began to, with that agreement with myself, I began to open up to clarity of ways that I denied my own potentials, ways that I had denied my own experiences, forgotten experiences, or could reframe them in a new way that was much more empowering. And I, I really thank Wayne Dyer. I was in, um, you know, I flew to Maui, Hawaii to, I wanted to go see Wayne Dyer because I wanted to tell Wayne Dyer, I thought he saved my life. 
and that I wanted to tell him that he is contributing to the work that I do in the world. And I flew to, to Maui and I had an event there, a woman's event there on Maui and we're gathered. And while we're gathered there, one of the women got a text message that said Wayne Dyer had passed, he had died. And I started going into the story, this is probably gonna make me emotional, but I went into the story of how I had flown to Maui because I wanted to see Wayne because I wanted to tell him in person the impact that he'd made in my life and that how he'd helped to open me to see the power in letting go by way of dying to the old and opening up for the new to come through. And I started telling this story and I said, I flew here because I wanted to tell him that story. And I said, oh, but I think I just told it. But I told it by way of an entire room of healers and teachers and transformational leaders and community leaders, all the women that were there, such powerful women. They the people that could, could carry the message out even beyond where you Yes, were. they took that message. So Wayne said, oh, yeah, Marsh, you can tell me that's fine. But tell the world, tell the world what you've learned. And it makes me emotional thinking about how very powerful we can be when we just pause. That is powerful. And I, and I receive that and I, um, I fully believe that. Um, one of my gifts has been being able to be present. And it's a practice. It's, it's it's something that you know, even though it's a gift, it still has to be practiced. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, but I, I look at that and I think, if if we were all just more present mm -hmm. with each other and with ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, I believe that there's there's connection with God, there's connection with ourselves, and then connection with others. Yes. And even connecting others with others, and what what you did in that room was you connected others with yes. others. Yes. Can go beyond. Um, and what's magical about it, though, Bob, I want to say is that that was not planned. Right. Me. Yeah. That was planned by spirit. So when I say pause, just pause and allow what wants to be said to be spoken. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, not only did it, I tell the story, but I also paused long enough to realize that I'd been guided to tell the story. Mm -hmm. so that brings me you know always brought me to what am I being guided I actually asked my clients what wants to become what wants to be spoken through you at this time is the way we discover our calling what, what is it that's wanting to be spoken through you at this time and it's a very different approach than saying what's your calling or what are you supposed to do in the world right. or you know how you know it's about what wants to be because you're so powerful your voice is so meaningful you, the, the work that you can do in the world and the contribution you can make is beyond what we can recognize. So what wants to be spoken through you at this time? And generally, when I ask that question, like right now, I'm probably asking it and somebody's answering that within themselves. They know that That's answer. Perfect. They know that answer. And then it's finding the, the courage, you know. I'm, you know, courage is a big thing. We've got to, like you and I've talked, we just like, there's times we... It looks like we know it all. But the fact is, is that we're constantly learning it and then giving it out. Learn it, give it away, learn it, give it away. And that's that's how we can we can bring our community and our world mm -hmm. together. You know, the, the part I love about that, that being present, that being, you know, um, you know, being really quiet and still to receive that and to know. Um, the part I love about that is it's something that we can all do. Yes. It's not something that, oh, that's reserved for those people. That's reserved for the people that have wealth. That's yeah. the people that already have a big platform. No, it's, it's yeah. everyone can do it, but it's going to take effort. It's going to take intention behind intention. it. And the intention is to say, you know, I'm going to be the best I can be. Mm -hmm. Not for you, not for him, not for them, not for my mom or my dad or for somebody, but for me, yeah. I'm going to show up the most I can for me. And then we end up showing up for all of those around us because we're being the best we can be, meaning we're being who we were intended to be. 
Right, right. Wow. But it takes it. Ta yeah, it's it's takes courage, bravery. It takes a willingness to let go, you know, like Wayne said, let, you know, die to the old so the new can be born. Right, it right. Takes, you know, it takes, and it's, I like, there's, there was a time I once said, let go of my identity. I like the identity that I had, mm -hmm. but when I liked that identity, it was so constricting, you know, and I'm still, most of us are breaking into a new identity right now as we speak. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, most of us are finding new ways. Right. Absolutely. We are. And, and, you know, and we're going to have to find new ways in the future too. Forever. There's an evolution of everything. Right? Everything next level, every next level demands a different you, you know, um, Marsha, I just, I really appreciate you. And I, I really appreciate you as the woman that you are, um, as the, um, the person that you are that goes beyond just the woman. Um, but I also greatly um, appreciate your influence in the world. Um, I've seen you influence from the front of the room. I've seen you influence through just a text message and, and you know, uh, Facebook messaging or whatever. Um, and I've seen what you've done today. I think you, I've got I've got people online right now going, um, this is beautiful. This is um, uh open to receive, um, love this, um, uh, on fire, 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 um, hello. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I, there's a gal on here that is um, just a dear friend, sweetheart of a person, amazing entrepreneur, just launched a new, another business. Um, her name is Debbie Bettendorf. And she's got a, a podcast as well that um, I want to connect you to because She's an amazing woman as you are. And I think you two would have some great conversation. Oh, um, fantastic. That's great. Definitely want to, Debbie Bettendorf. So look for that intro, introduction. Okay. Uh, introduction. Um, you know, as, as, I, as I think about our time together today, Marsh, um, there was no accident. You know, you know I, I sent you an invite. You picked a date. I believe that it was a predestined date. It was a, a date that was set to be exactly what you've given today um uh, debbie says i would love to have her on my podcast oh great right. fantastic that's fantastic um, Thank you. you both are just amazing women thank you so um i'm going to open it up for a couple of questions and then i'd love um, that and we're going to we're going to give you her contact name. she's going to be a part of the next level by association facebook group so you guys will be able to stay connected with her and, and all of that too but we're going to give you her books titles and how to best connect with her and everything else but before we do that let's um let's open it up for questions flo i know that you uh, you always have some great comments and questions wow marsh thank you so much for sharing i loved um i loved your stories and everything one that really stood out was your discovery when you're asking women in the beginning, the questions that you wanted answered for yourself, did you come up with the same questions for everyone? Generally, I would start with the same question, mm. uh, I, I believe, but the, the questions were never the same. The spirit of the person that I was speaking to was really informing the questions. I know that sounds a little bit out there, but that's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. That um, the spirit, when you're tuned in to and connecting with someone, it's pretty easy to be able to hear what they're longing mm. about. And when they communicate that through through their energy or through their presence, then asking those questions and continually asking them in different ways or until they get the answer that they're looking for. So I hope that's answering your question, but it's when I would, when I sit with women, still to this day, when I sit with women and I tune into their presence and many times I'll just quietly ask to myself, what is, what is it that they would most benefit from knowing? And then I'll ask a question around that. What would they most benefit from knowing? Mm, that. and then the questions then just continue to propel from there because your answer will dictate or will inform the next question 
So the interviewing was very different. Most of the time, women would say, how did you know to ask me that? How did you know to ask me that question? How did you know? And generally, I would just say, I'm a good guesser. I'm a good guesser of a good question to ask. Mm -hmm. But the fact is, is that I was connected to you. You know, I was connected to your heart. Uh, I, you know, and it's easier, much easier sometimes for somebody else to hear than it is for us to hear for ourselves. I know it is for me. Yeah. I have my spiritual teachers that I call upon to hold space for me. And it's much easier to ask someone or communicate with someone and then answer the questions in that way that it is for me to get up my own answers or you to get your own answers. I believe perhaps you may, yeah. may be different than that. But. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. You're welcome. Who else has a question or a comment? Alana, I see your mic is on. So does that mean you have a question? Or a comment? There she is. Yes, there I am. They, I didn't know my mic was on either. Sorry. Um, I must have been really quiet. Um, you were quiet. Oh, uh, well, thank you, Marsh, very much. I loved your share. Um, I had been around Wayne Dyer a few times. He spoke at the Unity Church up in San Luis Obispo. And um, beautiful, positive man. Um, what One, I also want to send condolences about losing both of your parents. I lost mine um, in 18 and 19. Um, so I can understand that. And it put me in a, just kind of a lost spell. And I really like the way you said about um, self-love. What I wrote down was self-love can then lead to sympathy. Um, and I think for me, the a lack of confidence and not feeling good enough sometimes when I go back into what you were sharing about self-love, um, going and honoring yourself. I wrote that down about three times in my notes about honoring yourself and that women need honoring, men need honoring. My 22 year old granddaughter moved in with me. When I put her a little bit on a pedestal, you know, she just, she can soar. So um, I just love that. But I think it's really been something to, um, it got to the the not good enough, the insecurity part of different times. I mean, am I a fake? Am I can I be a coach? Can I be a health consultant if I'm 15 pounds overweight? And um that you gave me some really good deep thought in there. You know, I'm gonna tell you that people came to me when I first did Amazing Woman and said that I couldn't do an Amazing Woman program because I didn't look like an amazing woman. And I'm like, I just have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. I have no idea what you're talking about. The amazing mm -hmm. woman. Your amazing woman, Alana, is alive in you, so vibrant and so alive and so eager to serve and so eager to communicate your wealth of wisdom. And that's the part of you. That's the only part of you that we need to know. You know, the word confidence is an interesting word. Uh, confidence, I've always felt, comes after we've accomplished something. And I don't have to have confidence to, to move forward. I just have to have a willingness to move forward. And then after the willingness kicks in and I'm out there before I know it, I can kind of look over my shoulder and I'm like, oh, look, confidence is traveling with me now. I've got some confidence here, but it's really about you. Uh, I don't think we have to find confidence for you to step forward. I think you're so clear on your message. You're so clear on the vibrancy of your passion to serve that nothing's going to stop you. Nothing will stop you. Well, thank I you. I know that to be. Yeah. And I think of um, that word intuitive. And I think of it as listening to your inner self and your inner guidance. And even when you and Bob both were hesitant on that word intuition, I just think it of listen to yourself and you continued to say, I listen, I'm a good guesser. I, you know, I follow, you know, and it's listening to that heart and it just again that reiterated the part of self-love and compassion when you go within you realize how much you're growing in those ways beautifully spoken thank you thank you a lot. thank you um jim we're going to bring you on a second i just want to read a comment comment debbie bettendorf said chills just chills so um 
Yeah, 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 I have them too. I can't wait for you to be on her show because I, I know you have, have some great conversations. I'm I have them too. I, you know, get chills all the time. And I think it's just when, you know, when we're speaking truth through ourselves to ourselves, mm. it's just an affirmation. Just speak more of that. Just be yeah. there more. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Good yeah, brother. How are you, sir? I'm doing awesome, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's such a, such an incredible great, great guy. He's a member of the community, super great guy, um, leadership, uh, personality, just a great, great human being, quality human being. So Jim, question thank or you. comment? Um, it was just it's such a pleasure. I, I just got off a plane, um, early this morning and, um, hopped on this with, with you and, had no idea what to expect. And wow, what a what an incredible hour uh, to spend learning about Marsh Engel. Marsh, I sense your energy. I feel your calm energy. And it's so inspiring to me. I I I appreciate your listening skills as a sales guy. I've been, you know, I, you, that's something that's critical to learn. You have two ears, one mouth and listening, but then being able to convert that with your gift of empathy, um, you know, helping to take, listen to that and then reflect the glow back and encourage those that you're listening to with their own message and encouraging them to be, you know, step into their real self that, that they've been they've already got all the tools all of the all of the things they need to, to blossom and all they need is to ask themselves and you encourage this that those intelligent questions you know in that still quiet space and then have the courage to listen to that and and take that on and grow from it is so beautiful. So I thank you for, for affirming that and sharing that and giving people the, the power to do that in their life. It's so important. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, and I Jim. love what you said, reflect the glow. Isn't that a beautiful statement that you said? Reflect the glow. Uh, that was yeah, not the that's what I see from Jim. So that's that a was, beautiful that was statement. It's a beautiful, it's just like it kept it kept uh, shining through your words to me. And that's beautiful, a beautiful, beautiful way of expressing. Absolutely. Well, thank, thank you. you. That. Yeah, that's what I see. So that's glad to be able to share that. Thank so you. Thank you. Love that. Mm -hmm. So as we, as we wrap this up, guys, this was scheduled for 30 minutes, our Marsh and I talk. Um, but I just could sense that you guys were getting so much out of this that it was really... Um, impacting some people's lives. And because it's impacting the people that are online, imagine the people, the ripple effect, as my friend um, Doug Greedy calls it, imagine the people that are going to listen to this later. Imagine the people that are going to share it with their friends. So I invite you guys to share this out to your friends, get them to, to be able to watch it and get them to be able to receive some of the great chills and messages and questions that they can ask themselves. So Marsh, how do people stay connected with you besides being in the Facebook group with us? How do you like them to connect with you? What do you like them to do as a first reach out? And then what do you um, want them to do next with you? Okay, what I'd like them to do next with me, I'm really eager to connect with women who would like to contribute their voices to my next book. Okay. That's one thing that's really on my heart today. I'm, I just landed in Sedona last week, took a couple of days to rest, and now I hit the ground running here today with writing the next, the next book. I've been in uh, Nashville writing, and now I'm in Sedona finishing up, and I really am, would love to work with some women for that yeah. book. That's the first thing. But to find me, the best way would be to um, email me at marshingel at me.com, marshingel at me.com. And I'd love to hear from you, whether you're interested in the book or not. I'd just love to hear from you. I love to connect. And um, Bob, I'm so grateful for you. What a beautiful human being you are. And, you know, I've known that forever. And I've probably said that to you many times. And if I haven't, 
I want, I'd love to say that to you today is what an honor to know you and the good work that you're doing is spectacular. And I know that you know that on some level, but I'm just here to amplify that knowing within you that it's just, you're really doing really brilliant, brilliant, brilliant work. And you're doing it by being just authentically you. Mm, wow. That's a powerful visual for all of us. Mm. Thank I, you. I received that. Thank you for saying that. And um, thank you. I, re I received that. I appreciate that very much. Mm -hmm. You're so welcome. Marcia, I love you. And I love you. I can't wait till we're in the same room again together. Me too. But, and uh, let's make that happen sooner than later. And um, guys, reach out to her. Follow what she said to do to, to how to stay connected with her. We're going to have her as part of the Facebook group. So you'll you'll have her there as well. But um, go back and watch this again. Go back and share it out with some people to watch. Because I know the way it's impacting you. It's going to impact a lot of other people that, that you and I both know need to hear this message so that they can become all that they want to be and reach their next level personally and professionally. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for the questions. Um, Deborah says, uh, Debbie Bettendorf says, me, 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 me. So <laughs> I guess you guys will be in touch. Um, love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Marsh, have safe travels. Thank Enjoy you. Sedona. Thank and I look, you. Forward to be, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, love. Thank you. All right. Love you guys. Get out there. Make it a great week and enjoy your next level. You've been listening to Your Next Level Now with Bob Donnell. To find out more, call us at 949-542-6398. That's 949-542-6398. Or you can find more information on our website at everythingnextlevel.com. That's everythingnextlevel.com.